Welcome back. Our pop culture panel joins us uh, today to talk about a few of the more offbeat topics making news headlines. One involves a new video game that uh, developers are saying will help the homeless. But first, and it does get better, we mentioned homework. <laughs> so the president of France is doing what? Promising a ban? Well, this is a, this is a way to go egalitarian. Yeah. Because, you know, those darn families where the parents are involved and smart and hardworking and help their kids, they give their kids an unfair advantage over the uh, families where the kids have parents that are lazy, layabouts. Why would you ever ban homework? Doesn't make sense. Well, have they gone mad in France, some people might be asking. Uh, let's ask uh, Marnie Supkoff, joining us, the Deputy Common Editor with the National Post. Hey, Marnie. Hi there. Also with us, Scott Fox with the morning show uh, Z1035 in Toronto. Hey, guys. Hey, how you doing? We're good. Uh, Scott, maybe I'll ask you. You've got kids. Yeah. No homework. They, they'll want to move to France. This well, is what they're suggesting and proposing. Does this make sense? <laughs> well, this is the big game in school right now, is to try and get your <laughs> homework done before the bell rings so you don't actually have any. Oh. Kids want to do it, and uh, there's a lot of people who question how much you actually learn doing homework anyway. So I'm sure my kids would be quite content to skip the homework and go out and play, which is probably where they should be anyway. Uh, uh, does Marnie have kids? I've got kids. Okay. I've got three kids. <laughs> I, would your kids be happy? Uh, two of my kids are too young to know the difference. Uh, uh -huh. one, of, one of my kids is pretty young, but he's already got homework, so he would be thrilled. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not sure I'd be as happy once he gets a little bit older, though. I think, uh, I think there's a place for homework. Uh, well, let's talk about why this is being done in France. So here is what the French President Francois Hollande is saying, and here's a little quote. An education program is, by definition, a societal program. Work should be done at school rather than, rather than at home. And the reason, I guess, is educational equity right if you've got a program designed for work to work for all in some households the parents can't be home on time to assist both kids so scott in the in the or, or spirit of equity <laughs> This would make sense, right? Sure. Everyone gets the same chance. Sure it does. And in my particular case, I'm home. I just don't get it. You don't get the homework? <laughs> they have to teach me in a lot of cases. Oh. You know, it's true. I laugh yeah, because I'm right there. But how do they compensate for the amount of work that apparently our kids do in the evenings or at home anyway? Mm -hmm. uh, are, are they going to have a longer school day? How's this going to work? Do you know... As far as I know, they do a four-day school week now, and then yeah. they're going to carry it on and make it an extra half day. So you get an extra half day in school in exchange for no homework. Marnie, oh. in France, they get Wednesdays off school. Yeah. How do you like that? Your kids would love that. Uh, they'd love that, but now they're not going to get Wednesdays off school. They have to go <laughs> in for half a day. I think I, I think even my kids, who probably don't want to be doing homework, but I think even they would say, look, if my choice is to get an extra an extra morning where I can sleep in and wear my PJs late and relax and just have to do a little bit of homework, I think they might choose that rather than having to get themselves off the couch and off to school. Do you think teachers are going to like this, though? Because it puts more onus back on them, doesn't it? Marnie yeah. and maybe Scott, you can talk about that. I don't know. Marnie? Yeah, I, I mean, I think one thing teachers might like is that then they don't no longer have to police homework, which is a bit of a problem. But you're right. I mean, this is saying, look, every piece of learning that's going to happen, it's got to all take place in the class. And uh, yeah, that's that's some pressure. Hey, there's a, a big chunk of the school morning that gets used just checking to make sure homework was done. So that's the policing and they yeah. won't have to do that. It's probably also less to mark. Which I'm sure would be great for teachers. You better you know, make sure you're teaching them right, though. One, I don't one know. One of the I criticisms of the school system, and, and I can actually remember this as, as a student, as a kid myself, they say that our summer breaks are way too long, and the kids, especially the boys, the dumb boys, uh, they lose everything they learned the year before, and they come back and go, what? We never learned that. And, well, yeah, mm -hmm, you did, mm -hmm. and you, you might have known it for a week and a half, but one of the things about homework is it reinforces. You don't, you don't break out and, and break new ground as a student. You don't learn new things, you relearn what you're being taught in school. And so it looks to me like if you're going to take away I don't homework, know about that, because my kids bring home stuff and they say, we had no idea how to do it, unless they're just not telling me the yeah, truth. Yeah, they but were sleeping. We never the... learned this in school yet, <laughs> Mom. I remember is, that game. Yeah. <laughs> Said that yourself. Absolutely, a couple times. But, you know, the homework does teach you self-discipline initiative if you don't finish this also consequence there will be a consequence so Marnie what about the value of that I mean there is value in homework well, I think there is. I mean, homework is teaching you also that there are deadlines. There are things that, you know, you're, the, the rationale is supposed to be, oh, well, it's not fair because some parents don't get to help as much as others. Well, then ban parents helping. That would be totally fine. Homework isn't supposed to be about parents anyway. It's supposed to be about the kids. It's just giving them an extra bit of responsibility to say, I have to get this done on time and I have to get it in. And that is a valuable life lesson because, look, your boss is not going to say, 
uh, is not going to be okay with you saying, well, I couldn't finish this because I would have had to take it home, and sorry, this is a community project. It's yeah. not going to cut it. You know what's going to happen if this, if this is passed in France? The parents that are committed and bright and work hard and are the ones that help their kids with homework, if there's no homework, they're going to get their kids other schools to go to. And I don't mean necessarily during the daytime. I mean they'll be going to... Oh, you don't to, think it's value? They'll, they'll be gonna, going to yeah, evening classes. They'll be going to Saturday school. There will be tutors. We'll make a fortune. Because every, all these parents want to give their kids at least a good start. If not a head start, at least a good start mm -hmm. in their education. The other thing is, how about online tools? Like, everything's turning into online, uh, you know, you can get tutoring online. So, I mean, have they not thought of this in France? Uh, I'm it's sure not, they have. I mean, it would make sense. The onus is not on the parents now. Homework, in a lot of cases, is very routine in that it's Google, Wikipedia, print. And <laughs> that's just the way it works. So yeah. uh, they are spending a lot of time online anyway. So uh, maybe that's where the online, where the extra help is coming from. Mm -hmm. In a lot of cases, though, they're right. There aren't parents that are available all the time simply because of work hours and other commitments that can sit and help them do their homework. So maybe it is a disadvantage for the kids who don't have that parent at home to help them. Maybe. Speaking so, of online, though, yeah, you want to talk about this Yeah, story? Marnie, if you sit at the computer and you want to waste a little bit of time, would you play a game called I Beg? <laughs> Um, I probably would play anything, sadly, which is like, <laughs> not not a really good statement about me. But yeah, it does sound like a very bizarre game from what I've heard of this. Yeah, so. the premise, some guys in Vancouver are developing this. Uh, there's a homeless character depicted in this game. Uh, lines above his head. Uh, he smells, apparently. Uh, there are characters in the game saying, you smell, don't, don't touch, touch me. me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, is it right to use a cartoon note to, in some instance, poke fun? at the down and out at the homeless or is it okay to do that if it raises awareness about you know how these people really struggle to make it through day to day scott they've gone through a very complicated process i think with the best of intentions here no i don't think you can have someone playing a homeless person that tries to get better at their panhandling skills just to try and relate to the homeless they probably could have come up with a better way to do it mm -hmm. But sad as it is, I mean, there's people who will be completely addicted to a game where you're an angry bird trying to kill a pig. So, I mean, people will play just about anything. If the game's good enough. You if mean, the game right? is good or enough. And it doesn't even matter enough. about the graphics. They well, just want a little bit of content. I'm intrigued that Marnie, grown woman, is going to confess that she actually plays the odd video game. What kind of games <laughs> do you like, Marnie? I play. I like any sort of little puzzle games. I will play with birds killing pigs. I will do <laughs> any, yeah. any of that stuff. But actually, it's kind of interesting you say that. What I won't play are the, the military games, the games with guns lots of guns and shooting and killing zombies and it seems to be a gender divide and it's got, and in in some ways I think there's a lot worse out okay, there. Okay, okay, Marty, it's okay for an angry bird to kill a pig, but you can't kill a zombie. Yeah, there's too much Are blood. you kidding me? Uh, yeah, when you <laughs> <laughs> when you kill the pig, there's no blood, there's no gore. The zombie games, too much blood and gore. I, I think I, my understanding was too with the homeless game that some of the money for in-app purchases that you make would actually go to charity. So I think they have that going. Yeah, for them they do. Too. Um, but I don't know. Is this the right way to raise awareness on the issue, or are we all getting duped? Is this the, just the person that came up with this idea saying? I'm going to do this because the media will be talking, but it'll get attention. Oh, it'll be great for me. Like we are right now. Right. So, yeah, absolutely. It did get publicity. I think a lot of people say, well, we'll donate proceeds to charity in order to legitimize it. No, it doesn't necessarily do that. Uh, maybe this will draw attention to the plight of homeless people. And trying to make them improve their panhandling skills, I don't think necessarily is going to do much positive. But I, I guess if it does anything, it, it does that. Okay, well, we know what Marnie's going to be doing over her weekend, finding some <laughs> frivolous video game to play. Good luck with that, Marnie Supkoff, Thanks deputy editor much. with the National Post. Scott Fox with Z1035 in Toronto. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Am I the only guy that thought South Park when I saw those drafts? Yeah, they look like that. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Have, Have a great, great weekend. Week.